Welcome to Chapter 5. You know you've got your business up and running when you've reached the point where you have to go out and cash your machines. Congratulations! It's now time to collect your money. With the Venstar 3000, collecting your money, cleaning your machines, and adding candy is really a snap. It's so easy, we call it cash. In a moment, you'll see why. Here's what's covered on this CD. Cash and what it means. Your cash kit. How to collect your profits. How to add candy to your machines. Spray your machines down to clean them. Head home with your money. Use of spare parts and maintenance tools. And what to do about damage, vandalism, and theft. Maintaining your route is as quick and easy as cash. Okay, I can't bear the anticipation any longer. Here's what it means. Cash. The C stands for collect your profits. A means add candy. You do that by swapping out canisters. The S stands for spray your machines down to clean them. And the H means now this is when you get to cash in all that change. The H means head home with your money. Cash is the central activity of your business operation. With your Venstar 3000, maintenance is a breeze. You want to know what the biggest complaint is on the part of location owners? Vendors don't come around to maintain their machines. So you've spent all this money to buy your machines, you've got them located, and then you won't go out on a monthly basis to collect your money and make sure your machine is cleaned and stocked? Believe it or not, this is the case with some vendors. Then the location owner wants the machine removed. Don't make that same mistake. You are in a food service business. You don't want your machine to become a blight on the business. Don't lose locations. Keep your machines clean and well stocked with product at all times. When you go to a location to cash your machine, ask yourself the following questions. When you first enter the location, is your machine visible? Is it clean? Does the machine attract you? Would you want to buy candy out of this machine? Trust your first impressions. They will be the same impressions of your customers and the location owner. Let's talk about your cash kit. There are several maintenance items you will need when you go out to cash your machines. Your cash kit should include the following. Two top door lock keys. You will use the same two keys to open the top door on all your machines. One back door lock key. You will use this same key to open each back door on your machines. An extra set of locks for the top door and the back door. These are spares that may come in handy. One extra top door. This is a spare. One extra back door. This is also a spare. One empty candy canister. A spare. One or more service totes stocked with pre-filled candy canisters. One scoop or plastic measuring cup for product. One pair of scissors. Plastic Ziploc bags for collecting quarters and carrying product. We recommend the gallon size. One dark cloth towel. You will use this for wiping down the machine stand and pedestal. The reason we recommend a dark cloth is that you will be cleaning your machine in public. Dust and dirt tend to build up on the stand and pedestal. When you use a dark cloth, if there are people around, they won't see the amount of dirt that comes off the stand. A white towel tells all. One or more rolls of paper towels. You are going to use these to clean your machine heads. Don't worry, they don't get nearly as dirty as the stands. One spray bottle filled with water and two squirts of dish detergent used to clean the head and the top of your machines. Extra candy labels. These are spares. Pen and paper. One flat tip screwdriver. You may need this if you have to perform spot maintenance on a machine. 
one Phillips head screwdriver, again for spot maintenance. One adjustable open head wrench or ratchet with extension. You will use this also for maintenance. One coin mech bezel assembly. This you're carrying as a spare. And one spill tray, also as a spare. Gather these items together in your car when you head out to cash your machines. Later, we'll tell you when you may need to use the spare machine parts and maintenance tools. Before heading out to cash your machines, get a 30-inch piece of cord. You will fasten your door lock keys to this cord. The same set of keys will unlock and lock the doors on all of your machines. Take the back door key, that's the barrel key, and fasten it in the center of the cord, making a knot to secure it. Next, take each of the top door keys and fasten them to either end of this same cord. Now you have all your keys in one place when you go to cash your machines. No fumbling or dropping keys. First, you're going to collect your profits. The first thing you will do when you go out to service your machines is to collect your profits. To empty your machine of quarters, you will need the following. Plastic Ziploc bags, again we recommend the gallon size, and your set of keys. Now, take precautions when handling your money in locations. Use common sense. There may be people around when you cash your machine. If the machine is against or near a wall, plant yourself between the machine and the wall with the back of the machine facing you. This way, as you empty the coin trays, you can also watch the room for who is coming and going. Open the back door of the machine using your barrel key to unlock the door. With the barrel key still in the back door, use it as a handle. Gently pull upward and out to disengage the back door from the head. Now, slide each of the three coin trays out of the head and empty them into plastic Ziploc bags. Place the Ziploc bags in a safe place. We recommend you carry a plain duffel bag with you to put your coin bags in. If you're concerned about a high volume of people traffic, depending on where you're parked, you can transfer the duffel bag to your car before completing cash on your machine. Next, put the empty coin trays back into the head. Do not put the back door on just yet. Remember, you can only remove the candy canisters with the back door off the machine, and you're going to do this next. As an alternative, you can bring extra coin trays with you to replace the full coin trays in your machines. Using this method, you would remove the full coin trays from the head and place them on top of the candy canisters that you are going to swap out of the machine. Each coin tray fits neatly in the top of the candy canister. Put empty replacement coin trays in the head. Next, you're going to add candy. After collecting your profits and replacing empty coin trays, you are going to refill candy and nuts as necessary. You do this by simply swapping out canisters for ones that you have already pre-filled and packed in your tote. For even a small route, 5 to 10 machines, we strongly suggest you purchase our service tote. This tote comes with six complete candy canisters and space for up to eight candy canisters total. Additional candy canisters can also be ordered separately through our customer service department. When you go to a location, you don't have to carry in a large box of candy, and you don't want to stand there and dump or shovel candy from this box into your machine. It's too sloppy and cumbersome. The unique patented design of the Venstar 3000 eliminates this problem. The removable canisters are vital to the ease of maintenance that we have built into your machine. Swapping removable canisters makes adding candy quick, easy, and professional. This is what sets you apart from the rest of the pack. Here's what you will need to add candy to your machines. 
one service tote, a minimum of six pre-filled candy canisters, extra candy and nuts packed in plastic bags. We recommend you use one-gallon Ziploc bags. This extra candy is used to top off canisters that don't need to be swapped. It's also used to give location owners and employees samples when necessary. You will notice that these items are already on your cash kit list that I reviewed earlier. So here's how it works. Fill your candy canisters with the selection of candy and nuts you will be adding to the machines on your route. Place the canisters in your service tote and load the service tote into the trunk of your car. Pack extra candy and nuts in plastic bags and place them in the trunk of your car alongside the service tote. Remember to pack a scoop or plastic measuring cup. When you cache your machines, bring the service tote into the location with you. If you have not done so already, remove the back door and the top door of the machine. Swap the canisters out that you are going to replace. Before you replace these canisters, look down into the chute and coin mech bezel assembly to make sure there is no candy or nuts stuck in the assembly or chute. If there is, remove these pieces so that candy can flow freely through the chute. Now put your pre-filled canisters in the head and place the canisters you took out into the service tote. Provided you have already collected your money, replace the back door and the top door and lock both. Whenever you handle candy and nuts, use latex gloves, especially when you're handling candy at the location. Remember, this is a food product and needs to be handled accordingly. You're done adding candy. It's that simple. Now, you may be asking yourself, what happens when you run out of pre-filled canisters? Simple. You have been putting the canisters you have removed from your machines back into the service tote. Remember the extra candy you packed into plastic bags and put in the trunk? When you take the service tote back out to your car, you are going to refill those canisters with product before going to your next location. So you will always have a full service tote of pre-filled canisters. Now, you'll notice that extra candy labels is an item on your cash kit list. As you remove canisters from your machines, you may notice that some of the candy labels may be worn, peeled, or torn. You will have to replace these. So when you refill the canisters, you will need to replace any worn candy labels before using these canisters at your next location. All right, you're halfway home. Next, you're going to spray your machines down to clean them. <laughs> this is a no-brainer. Take the dark towel and wipe down the stand and pedestal of the machine, moistening the towel as necessary to remove any dirt that is stuck on the stand or pedestal. Using your spray bottle and paper towels, spray and wipe the head of the machine and the spill tray until they are clean. What, that's it? Yes, that's it. What do you do now? Once you finish cashing your machines, you head home with your money. As with any business, there are things that come up from time to time that have to be managed. So here are some additional cash tips. Always test your machines before leaving the location. Take a quarter and vend each selection on the machine to make sure the machine is vending properly per your desired vend settings. There may be times when, while you're at the location, the location owner or an employee of the business decides to approach you for free candy. Obviously, this situation has to be handled diplomatically. Are you really going to tell the business owner who let you locate the machine no free candy? On the other hand, you don't want to have the owner or employees lining up to dip their hands in your product for free. One of the ways your machine makes money is from people who work at the location who vend candy out of your machine. So when you find yourself in this situation, take a quarter, either out of the machine or out of your pocket, and vend a serving of candy out of the machine. 
This way, you are giving the business owner or employee the impression that you just bought him or her a serving of candy. Don't allow anyone to dip their own cup into your candy. You don't know where that cup has been. From a food service standpoint, it's unhygienic. If you want to test a new selection of candy in your machine, put a small amount of the selection into the machine first. Then invite the business owner or a couple of employees over to the machine for a taste test. Again, vend the product out using your quarter. If some of the people like the new selection, try three to five pounds of it first to see how it moves. Situations may arise where the location owner decides that he or she likes a particular product and wants you to put that product into your machine. In addition, the location owner may tell you that he doesn't like a product that you are currently carrying in the machine. Let me give you an example. Suppose you are doing $40 a month on M&Ms and $5 a month on cashews. Now the location owner wants you to remove the M&Ms because she doesn't like the M&Ms. Here's where you have to remember that you are running a business. But you also have to be diplomatic. In a situation like this, you might say, Mr. Location Owner, here's what I'm willing to take out. The cashews aren't moving, so I'm willing to replace them with another selection that you like. Remember, don't put an unpopular selection in your machine just because the business owner likes it. Worst case, purchase a small bag of that selection for the location owner's private use and give it to the owner as a gift, or sell it to the business owner at your cost. Suggest to the location owner that you got that selection just for him or her and suggest that he take the selection home. You don't want this private stash passed around to the employees who will now be eating for free rather than buying candy from your machine. Remember the spare machine parts and maintenance tools on your cash kit list? Here are examples of what you may need those for. Let's talk about damage to locks. Although this is rare, from time to time you may have to replace one or more of the locks on your machine. For example, someone vandalizes your machine by pushing a toothpick into one of the top door locks. Now, not knowing that the toothpick is in there, you come along and put your key in the lock. You push the key in, lodging the toothpick into the lock permanently. Now you can't get the lock open and you can't remove the top door. In this situation, how do you get the top door off? Here's how you do it. First, open the back door and take all three canisters off the head together at the same time. The middle canister is only held on by the two outer canisters and held in place by the top door. So now that you've taken all three off at the same time, that middle canister is free. One of the outer canisters is held in place by a lock that opens. So unlock that lock to remove the second canister. Now you have one canister still locked to the lid. This is the lock with the toothpick in it. Turn this canister upside down. The top door is still locked to the canister. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, one of the maintenance tools on your cash kit list, Remove the screw from the bottom of the canister. Remove the entire proportioner assembly from the canister by gently pressing the two gray tabs on the bottom of the canister away from the canister so that you can slide the proportioner assembly out from under the lip of the canister lens. Pour the contents of the canister out. Next, using a ratchet set, or adjustable open head wrench, place your hand in the canister and unscrew the small hex nut from the end of the lock shaft. Remove the cam from the lock shaft and separate the canister from the door. To replace the lock, unscrew the large hex nut and remove the lock shaft from the top door. You can replace this with another lock following the directions in Chapter 3. Now, if you don't want to replace the lock at the location, you can use the extra canister and top door, 
those are spare machine parts, and swap the canister and top door out, replacing these with your backup canister and top door. Then when you get home, you can deal with separating the old canister from the top door. What if you have a worn or damaged chute door, and this may happen? If you find the chute door worn from use or vandalized, replace the chute door per the instructions in Chapter 3. Or, if it's easier for you to do on location, you can replace the coin mech bezel assembly, again per the instructions in Chapter 3, and install a new chute door later when you get home. Sticking Candy from time to time, candy gets stuck inside the chute. This usually happens with soft shell product like chocolate raisins that have a tendency to soften and melt with the onset of hot weather. If you find that candy has melted and gotten stuck in the chute, do one of the following. Slide a piece of paper down the chute to free the stuck piece of candy from the wall of the chute. Or, if necessary, Remove the coin mech bezel assembly, per the instructions in Chapter 3. Find a bathroom on the premises and wash the chute out, then replace the coin mech bezel assembly. Or, replace the coin mech bezel assembly with your spare and clean the chute when you get home. Damage to the spill tray. In rare situations, you may find the spill tray damaged or otherwise vandalized when you go to cash your machine. If this is the case, you will have to replace the spill tray. Here's how you do it. Remove the top and back doors. Next, remove all three candy canisters from the head. Now remove all three coin trays from the head. Next, you're going to remove the empty head from the stand and turn it upside down on a flat surface. Remove and replace the spill tray per the instructions in Chapter 3 under How to Install the Spill Tray. Put the head back on the stand, and again, you can reference Chapter 3 for instructions on how to do that if you don't remember. Now you're going to replace the coin trays, candy canisters, and doors. Or, you can carry an empty head in your car with the spill tray already installed, and then swap the empty head before replacing the coin trays, candy canisters, and doors. Uh, I think you're seeing why we recommend that you carry spare parts with you when you go to cash your machines. Now, if you don't want to carry spare parts with you when you cash your machines, then you may need to carry an extra machine or two with you as a backup. How about quarters that make detours? When you swap out your candy canisters, always look into the head from the top before replacing the canisters. Sometimes you will notice quarters sitting on the outside top of the chute. These quarters just never made it into the coin tray. Although rare in their occurrence, the following are some adverse situations that could arise when you go to cash your machines. We want you to be prepared for them. First, let me talk about vandalism and theft. All right, you may be thinking, vandalism? I didn't sign up for this. So before you get too emotional, keep the following in mind. You are now running a business. Every business has to deal with vandalism and theft. As long as there are people on the planet, there will be those who decide to steal and vandalize. So you have to come to the understanding that vandalism may occur from time to time and that it is part of your cost for doing business. Your Venstar 3000 is a mechanical device. No matter how well they are secured, all mechanical devices can be defeated. This is why your machines come with a 10-year theft and vandalism maintenance agreement. Should your machine be vandalized, please refer to this agreement for specifics of your coverage. If your machine is vandalized or stolen, you must get a police report 
before engaging your coverage under this agreement. Machine tampering. Let's say you go to cash a machine and there is no candy in a selection. Right, now you're all excited. But when you open the back door to empty the coin tray, you find that there are no quarters in the tray. <laughs> so where did the candy go and where did the quarters go? First, check the coin mech bezel assembly. Does the handle turn backwards or forwards without putting a quarter in? If so, that's how you lost the candy. Change the coin mech bezel assembly. If the coin mech is functioning properly, then your machine has been tampered with. Some people do this not necessarily to steal a handful of quarters, but just to see if they can beat the security on the machine. Check the outside of the machine to see if you notice any pry marks on the doors and canisters. Or someone may have found a way to pick the locks. If your machine has been tampered with in this way, depending on how much you have lost, you may want to reconsider the location. Slugs and other currency. Although this is very rare, you may find yourself in a situation where someone is using slugs the size of quarters to vend candy out of your machine. If this is the case, test the slug first by putting it in the coin mech and turning the handle to see if the slug actually goes into the machine. If it doesn't, then someone may have tampered with the doors and left the slug in there. Again, if this happens often, you may want to reconsider the location depending on your losses. Suppose you go to empty your coin trays and find nickels, pennies, or foreign currency. Again, test these coins in the coin mech to see if they go through when you turn the handle. If they don't, someone may have tampered with the doors and left these coins in there. Let's talk about damage to the machine. In rare instances, you may find that machine locks have been broken in the process of tampering or that canisters have been cracked or broken. This is where carrying spare machine parts and maintenance tools will make your life a lot easier. Again, check your coverage agreement in the event your machine is vandalized because you do have coverage. Machine theft, right? The worst of the worst. In very rare circumstances, machines are sometimes stolen. Should this happen to you, just remember that you have theft coverage under your 10-year theft and vandalism maintenance agreement. Check your agreement for details. Remember, if your machine is stolen, always get a police report before contacting us about machine replacement. If your machine is vandalized or tampered with in any way, you may be inclined to immediately remove your machine from the location. To illustrate the point, let me make the following example. Your candy costs you about a nickel per serving. You find nickels in your coin tray. This means someone has tampered with your machine and vended out candy for a nickel per serving instead of a quarter. Well, the candy only cost you about a nickel per serving, so what did you lose? These will be the types of things you will have to consider before deciding whether to locate the machine elsewhere just because it was vandalized. So, a bit of advice. Determine what the vandalism or tampering really cost you. Does it happen frequently or rarely? Has the location been making you money? Is it one of your top locations? Perhaps a talk with the location owner or manager would help. Maybe there is a different area at the location where the machine would be less prone to vandals and still make money. Remember, ultimately you are not in the locating business. You're in the business of vending and cashing your machines. So don't relocate machines unnecessarily. Suppose the location owner asks you to remove your machine. You don't want to have to remove the machine unless it's really doing poorly. So find out why the location owner doesn't want the machine any longer and attempt to rectify that concern. Now, usually, 
it will come down to the owner wanting a split of the profits or more of a split of the profits. In a situation like this, if you're asked for a split of the profits, start at 5% and work your way up from there as necessary. See Chapter 4 for information regarding how to negotiate profit splits. Let's say a location owner has referred you to other businesses where you have subsequently located other machines. Now that location owner wants more money. Be cautious about this negotiation. Whatever split you wind up negotiating with him, you may wind up having to negotiate with the other location owners that he referred you to. You have just completed the audio CD for Chapter 5. On this CD, we covered cash and what it means, your cash kit, how to collect your profits, how to add candy to your machines, spray your machines down to clean them, head home with your money, use of spare parts and maintenance tools, what to do about damage, vandalism, and theft. This ends the audio CD for Chapter 5.